So let's bring in our legal panel, Wendy Patrick, a veteran prosecutor and trial attorney. Troy Slayton is a criminal defense attorney and former prosecutor. I've been doing this job a long time, Wendy. I can't remember a weekend after Christmas like this with so many fi fights breaking out in so many different malls around the country. I mean, a dozen states at least, and they all just kind of seem to have this common theme. Now, there is word that at some of them, specifically in Ohio, the Beachwood Mall, uh, that it may have been organized online. If that's the case, can prosecutors pursue charges? John, you've accurately framed the legal question. Is this a coincidence or a conspiracy? This is why we shop online, isn't it? Yeah. This kind of chaos, coordinated chaos, or the allegations, can make a very big difference legally. Because let's face it, there's lots of disturbing the peace kind of charges that would apply here. But most of those are misdemeanors. But a conspiracy charge makes that sort of thing a felony. So it could potentially be very serious if, in fact, we find that this post-Christmas chaos was coordinated. The, the good news is, in this day of digital communications and instant communications, Troy, police can go back and look at some of that and, and pull evidence against some of these people who may be coordinating these things online. Would you expect that? Uh, would you expect to see that happen in these cases? John, I certainly expect that investigators will follow the digital footprint wherever it leads them, but I'm going to have to disagree with my esteemed colleague, uh, Wendy Patrick, in that it's very difficult to make a charge for incitement because anything that you put online is protected speech unless they can show that it was it was going to cause imminent harm, that the person that was making these postings knew that it would incite people to, to imminently, that means immediately, act out. What about the mall owners, Wendy? Are they in some way potentially on the hook for a failure uh, to provide security here? Well, you know, malls are soft targets, and they are filled with distracted shoppers. And what happened in these malls is basically it ended up being a stampede, not for sales, but for safety. And regarding whether the mall has liability for that, you look at whether or not such a thing was foreseeable. I mean, it's just a matter of time, some speculate, before we have some kind of metal detectors at malls. But one of the other things you worry about is the incitement doesn't necessarily have to be exactly that. It could be any kind of a conspiracy to commit a crime. That is the way it becomes a felony. But civil liability is what those mall owners are worried about. So it comes back to a question of foreseeability for them. We all know that uh, teenagers do a lot of stupid things, Troy. A lot of these fights apparently uh, were begun by teenagers or juveniles. Uh, the fact that they are probably under um, the legal age of adulthood, is that a, a protection? Is it an ex explanation in some cases? Well, it's certainly a protection as to the, the panoply of potential punishments that could happen here. I mean, if somebody is under 18, then they're only likely to get a slap on the wrist. And it would even make, even if Wendy's theory is correct and they were prosecuted for conspiracy felonies to commit these crimes, then they're, they're really not going to get in that much trouble. But I think the real danger here is all the people that were running for safety. When you hear shots fired, yeah. I'm worried about the children and the elderly that could possibly get trampled by this stampede. Absolutely. Wendy, in, in New Jersey, there was one mall that had, I don't know, something like 13,000 people stampede out of it. If, if I'm in a crowd like that, say I'm a you know, young mother with a, a little kid in a stroller, or as Troy said, the elderly, I mean, that can be horrifically frightening, and I would want to be able to you know, take some action against the people who were, were responsible. Absolutely. And I think the three of us have had an excellent discussion about the difference between criminal and civil liability. Civil liability, no doubt, is where you're going to see things like enhanced damages. Was it foreseeable? Who was to blame? Were there enough security guards? And as you both point out, this, the timing is suspect. I mean, everybody was expected to be post-Christmas shopping, and that is when this attack was coordinated. So this is why we can't yell fire in a crowded theater, because it causes chaos like this. Yeah. Let's hope everybody just settles down from here on out. Got a lot of gifts still to return, so keep it, keep it calm out there, people. Wendy Patrick, Troy Slayton, thank you. Thanks, John. Thanks.